meeting a lot of drivers that will be following the ISMA MSS Tour this year. And in case you missed it, yes, they are together. They have combined resources to run what should be one of the best wing super modified seasons in quite some time. One of the drivers who is looking forward to it is out in the Cleveland area, actually a little bit less with west of Cleveland, out near Sandusky Speedway, 30 Nine-year-old Mole Lilji, I'm making sure I say that right, will be driving Danny Sewell's car this year. He finished seventh in points with Isma last year, 12 with the Midwest Supers. So he joins us here after a nap on Sunday afternoon. Did a little fishing in the morning, and now he's chatting with me just a little bit before four on Sunday. Hey, man, how we doing? Doing great. How are you, Doug? Doing very well. How'd the fishing go? Uh, better than normal. Uh, we had a handful of trips to the Sandusky River there in Fremont that we struck out on, and uh, we landed three nice eater-sized walleye this morning, so we should have a nice dinner tonight. Very nice. And you said you had been literally 275 years since you'd caught one, right? <laughs> You're not exaggerating at all. It was literally that long. Okay. <laughs> it right, was so. literally 275 years, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, when I looked at his name, because I haven't met Mo in person yet, and, and when you look at the way the name is spelled, I was like, gee, how do you say that? Lil G, I'm curious, is that a rapper from out in the West Coast or something? <laughs> No, I, I feel like financially I'd be in a little better shape if it were, though. Yeah, but your life could be in danger, too. So, but <laughs> You said I'm not the first one to pick up on that. No, some of the kids in high school also had a, a good laugh with that as well. So Okay, so instead of calling <laughs> you by your first name, that's how they called you, huh? <laughs> yeah. Hey, Lil and, G. And, you know. Yeah, and on, on a side note, it's also I've heard every conceivable pronunciation of it as well, if you could okay. think of any way. Well, well Everybody let, me see. Likes let me see if I can think of one. Um Lil Lil Jai, Lil Lil Jai, Lil Lyle, Lyle, Lige, Lee. Oh, oh, the French pronunciation. That's right. I yeah, forgot French about the French pronunciation. Pro- <laughs> that would work out really well. <laughs> of course, he is a union sprinkler fitter. Uh, he installs fire protection piping. Uh, sounds like an interesting and, and exacting job. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a good deal. Uh, we bounced around, you know, job to job for a little bit till we landed on something that was um, worthy of my time and. Um, you know, has a, a good pay grade. So it's a good deal. Work up in the air quite a bit and uh, drive around on lifts and climb on things on, on occasion. So it can be a little a little crazy sometimes. So if you have a fear of heights, this might not be for you, huh? No, if you have a fear of heights, you should definitely not be a sprinkler fitter. All right, he's 39 years old, like you said. He's been racing 33 years. So would you start at age six in go-karts? Uh, age seven in go-karts. How'd you do? Um... The first year was a little rough. Uh, I, I do remember my very first memory of anything to do with racing. We had a test day at um, the track in Fremont where I started, and uh, I looped the thing off the end of the racetrack on the very first lap. And, uh, <laughs> you know, remember seeing my grandpa's eyes were like big as pancakes. And uh, we recollected it and built from there. It turned out pretty good. Well, usually um, with kids, they start out one of two ways. you got to speed them up or slow, or de- slow them down. Were you the, we better slow this kid down guy? Uh, I would say it fell somewhere between that, but more towards slowing down a little bit, yeah. Gotcha. But I, I also started uh, road racing as well, and it's just a little different than, than oval racing. When we started oval racing more in go-karts, then we had to ramp up the aggression a little bit to be more successful. Were these shifter carts, or they just happened to be on road courses? Uh, I ended up racing shifter carts uh, as the last form of kart racing that I did full-time. And uh, at the time, though, we just ran a, a Briggs engine like they race on the oval carts Gotcha. when I started. And I've caught some <laughs> of that shifter cart stuff, you know, from Europe, and, man, that is some pretty serious racing. <laughs> yeah, as far as the go-kart goes, they're, they're no joke. Yeah. I mean, I've seen... Uh, seen a couple incidents where guys got tore up pretty bad and um that was the end of their racing career from a shifter cart oh really didn't just get out of shifter carts they just got out of racing <laughs> i it tore them up bad enough that they were no longer going to be able to race anything well, once you lose your nerve I've, I've seen a lot of guys i don't know if you have but uh, i've seen some guys try to come back after something like that and some some of them just could never make it can they no and the one deal uh the, the kid got hurt pretty bad Oh, he did. Okay. He crashed at a street race in, uh, it was Commercial Point, Ohio, I think. Uh, yeah, it was Commercial Point. And uh, had the linkage on the brake pedal came undone, and he airmailed it off a of fourth gear corner oh, no. uh, in a 125. And they landed uh, the life light in the beam field there with him, and he was 
was looking kind of grim there for a minute, but he, he pulled through, but that was it for his racing career. I'm glad he pulled through. So Yes, went yes to, for sure. What did you go to next? Was it 305 sprints after that, it was, or was it indoors with yeah. the micros? Um, I The indoor micro stuff I only you know tried a couple times, and uh, we struggled with it a little bit, but it's a tough deal. Um, but we moved from shifter carts into the 305 pavement sprint cars, mostly uh, at the time it was called the 305 Sprints on Asphalt Series, and uh, some Sandusky races, and then uh, other pavement tracks here in Ohio. How'd you do? Um, so the first season we actually raced at Sandusky full-time, and I was the co-track champion with Todd Buchanan, um, who's a name that some super modified fans might be familiar with from the area. So at 16, I was the co-track champion at Sandusky with Todd. Nice. I think we won one feature. And, uh, you know, we were competitive right off the rip. I ran second my first night out. Um, or the first night was in Columbus. So we did pretty good right off the rip, but it was it was an adjustment for sure. Winged Moving or not forward. winged sprints these were? Winged. They were winged. Okay. Did that kind of help you to, to decide to go to a winged super, or was that the plan all along? Um, it was never really the plan. Uh, basically, it was we were kind of flying by the seat of our pants. We know that... We, you know, we wanted to continue to race. We wanted to get out of kart racing because at the time we were racing shifter carts and things were very expensive. So basically we moved from shifter kart racing to 305 pavement sprints and we're spending roughly the same amount of money for a full-size race car. So I was 16 at the time and that was just the next logical step. We, we talked about going dirt racing and uh, the 305 and 410 dirt wing sprint cars here in the area are very competitive um but just ultimately we just decided we wanted to race pavement as opposed to racing dirt and that's just the direction that things carried me i guess did that time in the wing 305 help you in this in the wing super um i think a lot of it applies it's just when jumping from the 305 into the wing super is the speed difference is just like night and day i can only imagine yeah so, I mean, you're moving from a car that has, you know, maximum 500 horse to a car that has around 900. So you almost double the horsepower. And, and the Super itself, on the racetrack, I remember back when I, you know, first got on the track with the Super, and it was a bit imposing as far as how big the car is on the racetrack. It just at first, it just doesn't feel like there's any move to any any place to go and move the car to pass anyone it feels like the whole racetrack's taken up. But I could then see the more seat time you get, um, the thing starts to slow down in your head. And then you realize that there's gobs of real estate on the racetrack for you to pass on. Were these new tracks so, then you were going to with the Wing Super, or were some of them tracks no, you had already been to? The, the first two tracks I raced were Sandusky, which I was very familiar with, and Lorraine, which historically is, you know, there's been a million super modified races ran there, but we never ran the 305 sprint car at Lorraine. So when I ran the super there, it was a new track for me, even though it's right down the street. Because what I was wondering is if you obviously, if you already had some marks in your head from the 305, obviously those marks had to change when you got in the wing super. Um, or there's, did nuances, there's nuances that transfer from one to the other. Um, but in a similar note, even in the super, you may drive some say sandusky speedway you may drive a little different depending on what the race car is doing or you know when you're in traffic you know obviously everybody runs a little bit different line and you can't always run what you might consider the preferred line there so you got to get out on some racetrack where we can get by some race cars under a minute to go now uh mo the time goes really fast here yes, you told me when, when we did our little bio there a little while ago I'm, I'm curious if you still do this when you were in the 305 sprint you told me you had lucky underwear have we retired that <laughs> uh, uh superstition <laughs> it's it's retired uh, <laughs> the, the lucky pair wore out their luck and they just got retired to the trash can like any other normal pair gotcha okay so we won't have to worry about that when we see him at the track so he's a big <laughs> cleveland area sports fan too so uh mo it's good catching up with you i hope you have a great season and if you get up here for a fast friday sometime make sure to let me know I'd, I'd like to have a face with the voice okay that sounds good doug we'll catch dinner or something
There, I like that right there. So look for him in the 32 car this year. And, of course, the season coming up real soon. Jennerstown is right around the corner. Hit that blue E. That'll subscribe you. Turn on your notifications, all that stuff. And every time we're talking to somebody cool, you'll be the first one to find out.